Hello everyone and good morning. Welcome to Sunday in the Backyard. I am so glad that you are all welcome and willing to join me every Sunday morning in the garden. And one of the first things I wanted to talk about right off the bat is I had such a great opportunity yesterday to uh, be a part of a group of people that were chosen to do a TEDx Cole Park, TEDx here in Corpus Christi. And it was such a magical experience. I hope you'll check out some of the pictures. The actual online event is October the 17th. You should go ahead and get your free tickets. I will drop that in uh, the comments right here. And um, you just get your tickets just so they know who all is coming out to the event or who all is going to be tuning in to the event. My speech is called My Garden is a Sanctuary. And I hopefully all of these Sunday mornings that I have been a part of this with you guys that you have learned how I feel about gardening. Um, one of the things that I think is really important that I've been really trying to communicate a lot to people as I talk to folks about coming in and being involved in my um, gar gardening clients is that I teach people how to garden. I teach the loving, the love of gardening. Um, I teach about hands in the dirt learning. My goal isn't to teach you how to, is, my goal isn't to build you a garden and then walk away. My goal is to teach you how to garden. And sometimes that takes a true learning and shared balanced system. It takes long-term commitment. It takes patience and all of those things. So what I wanted to talk to you about this morning, because it's fall and all of the critters are just happy as can be to have this beautiful weather, including myself, and so what I wanted to talk about is the idea of balancing our backyard ecosystems in our urban homesteads and balancing our beneficial critter. Or bene and I say critter because I'm not just talking about the insects. I'm talking about all of the different types of wildlife that exist in my backyard. So what are you looking at over there? My honeybee? Now last season, I really had a problem with honeybees. I just didn't have enough honeybees. But as it turns out, the honeybees have put me on the path. They've figured it out, they've learned where I am, and now they're actually coming to this garden. A lot of animals, birds, bees, um, different types of critters, they begin to know what are the good places and they send their cohorts. Uh, bees and birds are actually like, traffic designed to follow a very specific path that another bee or a bird has followed. And so they follow each other into these spaces. And one of the things that I've noticed this year is that my hummingbirds have really started to increase. I have very specific hummingbirds that are, you know, living around here or stopping here on their migration, traveling through my garden. And so every morning, and, and I'm one of those people that I have at this point in my life, not all of my life, but at this point in my life, I wake up with the birds. I, and I, not just the chickens, but I want to be outside when the sun is coming up and I want to be able to wake up when all the birds start chittering and chattering around. Now, I say that about balance because there's a benefit, but there's also a take. You're giving to them and they're giving to you. And the healthiest, come back in here. Now. As I pass through here, I wanna show you something really quick. I had an orb spider web that went across this area over here. I actually talked a little bit about it in my workshop, in my garden workshop just last week. And one of the things that I had begun using was a sticky trap. And the sticky traps actually caught some of my lizards, which made me super bummed out because my lizards are doing the job probably even better than a sticky trap could have done of handling those white flies that were causing me some concern. So the last thing I want to do is kill the beneficial reptile that's actually helping me. But I did have some solace in knowing that some of my birds were actually picking those lizards off and eating them. So there was kind of an eco balance to system. And then in addition to that, I feel like that my garden sanctuary, the universe, whatever you want to call it, showed me what a natural sticky trap looks like. Now, I came over here because I wanted to show you what the natural sticky trap uh, looked like, 
but I think Joe accidentally walked through it and forgot it was there, <laughs> which is not unusual when you're talking about sharing your space with the critters, right? So here's my orb spider right here. She will be just happy as can be to rebuild a new web. She will probably try to find a web, place to build a web where someone's not gonna walk through it. But then her web is really, really good at catching all of those bugs that I don't want necessarily going around all over my garden. We're talking about thrips, the thrips that run along your, your peppers and leave these trails and then leave behind bacteria and disease. White flies that also will suck the minerals out of your um, different plants. And not only, and so what happens a lot of times with the, um, the pests is that not only do they take from the plant, but they also spread diseases around. And so that's part of the reason why you don't want them there. But if you've created a healthy, I call it microclimate or a balanced ecosystem, a, a wild native space in your yard, then you're drawing in all of the different good guys as well. And the good guys can actually take out more than any kind of chemical that you've paid for, even if it's an organic chemical that you've paid for. They can do a much better job. The dragonfly, if you've got dragonflies in your backyard, you have hit a gold mine. The dragonfly has these big giant eyeballs on the front of its head, which means that it can see all kinds of things. It's got this globe effect to be able to see all of these different things. They are the most successful predator on the planet, the dragonfly is, because they can literally catch a mosquito, boom, in the air and go right back by. So one of the things that we have to do is to protect their livelihood so they actually want to come back and be a part of your garden. Now, of course, we've talked often about the pollinators. You know how much I love all of the different hummingbirds, but there's other things in my garden as well, like the squirrels. Well. Sometimes me and the squirrels get in little arguments because the squirrels will pick up my little happy things and like throw them around. And they also will plant pecans in my garden beds. And I don't want another pecan tree growing up in my garden, but I do get to enjoy being a part of their lifestyle. I absolutely have a, well, and I back up a little bit because I may not want them to plant their pecans in my garden, but I do want them to plant their pecans in other people's, and not just in other people's yards, but all over the world, because I want more pecan trees all available. And that's basically how we've gotten so many different types of trees spread so easily is that our different critters like to help us plant those seeds for, they think they're gonna come back and dig it up, but it sprouts before they get back to it. So let me show you how my little garden likes to go. Yeah, you got a question for me? Oh, what's this? In your pocket. Oh, in my pocket. I'm all, what are, we, what are you reminding me about over there? Your props. <laughs> my props. I got this and I got this. We had a, made a little joke on dinner table talks about how the squirrels were campaigning during campaign season and this is their like campaign signs and they were taking all my campaign signs and sticking them around. Vote for Nutty the squirrel. <laughs> um, so what they do is, okay, so she comes so now if you look up there where the power lines are, now anyone that has sat out at sunset knows that those are the high traffic lines for the urban uh, nature that happens in our backyards. You've got the rats. They are always running over there. Um, and then of course the squirrels as possums well. Possums sometimes. Possums sometimes, the little possums. Um, they, the possums certainly run up and down the poles. Now what I've learned is I have this female squirrel. She runs over on the power line she runs down the power pole. She runs on the power. She literally has a highway over here. Take a left and runs over here, jumps down, jumps up on that branch right there, goes up into the tree, and then she runs the whole tree looking for the perfect pecans to take down out of the tree. Yesterday morning I was watching her and it kind of felt like she was actually looking at her crop to see whether her crop was ready to harvest or not. So she was like running up all the trees and she threw down a couple of pecans but then she left and only took one little bunch with her. But then today she came over like 11 times and she would come and get a bunch and then she'd run over wherever she was going and then she'd come back and then she'd do the same thing over and over again. So she's got a nest nearby. And it's just an enjoyment, not, to, not only 
to have the fruits and the vegetables and the flowers and the hummingbirds, but also just all of the different critters that interact out here. We've got toads, we've got lots and lots of lizards. I mean, my la lizards this year have been massive, and I think a lot of you have seen that as well. Um, one of the other things I ran into the other day, let's come back over here. I really like to leave these sunflowers, not just for the honeybees and the different pollinators, but I also like to leave them for all the different birds. We don't feed our birds here and I want to make sure that my birds have plenty to eat so that they don't eat my fruit. Now, they're going to eat some of my fruit regardless of how much I give them of other things. So my job is to just be really on point and paying attention to the things that are near harvest point so that I get them before they get them. But you have to keep in mind that you're just gonna share sometimes. And so the goal would be to be abundant, to plant plenty, to share, to be willing to share, but to plant so much that there's plenty for you and plenty for them as well. Um, a great example of that, in addition to the sunflowers and then getting into the sunflowers is many of you that watch this show regularly will have seen that I had some very, very beautiful cantaloupes hanging right out of this tree. Now my cantaloupe vine is pretty much done at this point and I'm not going to be getting any more cantaloupe out of it. But I ran, I went off to Charleston and then when I came home, they were gone and they weren't gone. Like some human took them. They were gone. Like, Oh, there's a, piece of a well-eaten cantaloupe all the way scraped out all the way. My guess is it was probably the possums, but I will tell you that one thing that can help with the possums is that if you've got a really, really nice compost pile and our compost pile is pretty dismal because I haven't been going and getting anything to put in it. But if you have a really nice, thick, full compost pile, then the, the, the possums tend to stay over in that area and they don't come into further areas um, and eat other things. But I grew enough pumpkins, sorry, I grew enough cantaloupes, I grew enough watermelon this year that I got plenty of stuff from my family and I was okay and willing and happy to share with the critters that come and help me out in my yard. Now, what does a possum do, they say? Well, I understand, as I understand it, possums are very helpful with fleas and ticks and things like that. And one thing that we have learned without a doubt is that if you catch that possum and take it away to some other nice lovely farm where it can run joyfully and be happy, um, another one will just come along and fill its space. So you're basically never gonna be, win the battle against the possums. So learn to appreciate what they bring and set them up spaces where they won't eat things, but also just pay attention to what's going on in your garden. And I've got all kinds of different types of critters that like to come and hang out in my garden as we're here just hanging around and looking you will see all of the time lots of little lizards um trying to think of all of the other oh ladybugs one of the things that i often hear all of the time is ants there's ants lots of ants i have ants all over my okra or my whatever you want to name and they're really the ants are not the problem there the problem there is aphids but if you've got a ladybug, then don't panic because the ladybug can eat a massive amount of aphids. And actually, a lot of times people will go and get ladybugs to try to release them into their yard, but you, you really don't have enough aphids for very many ladybugs. So that should tell you something. If you'll leave the aphids alone, the ladybugs will take care of it. Now, most of the time. You have heard me over the weeks talk about me having a bit of an aphid issue in this garden because of an imbalance of nitrogen. And because of that, I have learned some other techniques that are also good. I've learned that you can take just a watering hose and literally spray the aphids off. Or the other answer that you'll hear me say nine times out of 10 is that if the plant is infested with something and it's dying and, and weakening, it's just simply time to get rid of it. We don't, you don't need it in your garden anymore. Plant something in its place that is happy and healthy and abundant, especially this time of year. This is a great time of year to make sure that you're putting in your cucumbers. Oh, do you see my lizard friend right there? And there's another one right there. And there's another one right there. They're over here eating white flies. I also have, um, I think maybe if you watched it last week, I have the 
little roaches out here and they're not any of the kind of roaches that actually come in the house they're at literally a different shape they don't look anything like any of the ones you've probably ever seen in your house and they're really really good about helping to like clean up they are what's called decomposers and they come along and just help you break down things oh he's showing off I love it when they do push-ups and they get all excited and they do their push-ups. It's a mating ritual. <laughs> so the biggest point that I'm trying to make today and to share with you all is that when you have the happiest, most healthy garden and you're really enjoying your backyard garden and you're getting more out of it than it's taking from you, you are sharing your space with nature. You're sharing your space with the wildlife. And, um, and you know, th there's a happy balance and you have to find the happy balance and you have to make a decision and try things. You know, I did try the sticky traps and I may use sticky traps again in another day. Um, when I'm in a situation where like out at the farm, I'm in a market garden, I'm more of a market gardener. I'm really trying to grow, um, massive amounts of things and I'm spending a bunch of money. Well, I certainly don't want all the caterpillars to come along. And I noticed while I was out there the other day that there was lots of the little like cutworms or cabbage loopers, I guess sometimes can, they can be called. And so I'm learning out there what are the different types of insects. And I haven't really created yet a space like this one where it can all begin to balance itself out. So in the midst of that, I don't want to waste money. I'm going to have to be a little bit more cautious about making sure that I take them out. But if you take out all the pests, then your beneficial critters don't have anything to be a part of here. If I took out all my seeding sunflowers, and all of my different things that have insects on them, then my lizards wouldn't be happy, they wouldn't be here, my birds wouldn't be happy. Well, if we wanted birds here, we'd have to pay for bird seed to feed them the bird seed. But we do not have to pay for bird seed, even a little bit, because there's plenty, well, I say that, we pay for those chickens over there. But we do have lots of seeds and lots of insects and lots of things for them to eat out, here, out there. So. That is really all I have today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you will share in the comments things that are happening in your own garden uh, as it relates to now it's October. I hope you'll share about the different types of pest concerns and beneficial insects you have. And I hope that you will come together and communicate with each other about all of the different good guys, bad guys, all of that that are going on in your backyard. Hello, friend. That's where they like to hang out and stake the course. He's watching. This is his garden. He thinks he owns that garden more than I do. <laughs> All right, so one more thing. Don't forget, October the 17th is when the online event for TED Talk, and I hope you'll tune in and listen. Um, get your tickets online. I'll drop it here in the comments as well. Also, be sure to check out Dinner Table Talks. We're on episode five. It's a funny episode. We've been, well, there's been a few, a few weeks of pretty intense conversations. Uh, but then also, I do go back to that question about raw milk and milk, uh, low grade, low pasteurization milk. And so I'm hoping that you guys will tune in, listen in. If you haven't listened before, we are really trying to reach a massive goal today. So please listen share with a friend, all of that lovely stuff. And if you have an interest in getting my help, coaching you in your amazing garden spaces, please just send me a message and we will figure out the best way to work with your budget. Yes. Chris Butler says, thank you. You're welcome. Love you guys. <laughs>